Hello, good evening, everyone. It's that time again, going live with my dear friend, Kathy B, on Source Radio Network, and we're here on Healthy Living. Let's call into the show now. Okay, we're in. You there? Yep. Okay, I can't see you can get it then. Good evening, Source Nation. Good evening and welcome to Healthy Living. I am your host, Kathy B. We have about 45 minutes before we lose the live feed. Telephone number to reach us tonight is 619-924-0933. Again, 619 We want to take a moment to thank some special people because we would not be here without them, and they are. Delina Health, Wellness, and Fitness, Paper Defense Productions, Revolution Bills and Renovations. Of course, I want to thank my amazing, amazing Source Nation family. Of course, you can go out to Facebook as well as the Kathy B. Source Radio Network to get more information on Chef Keith and Vita as well as Clinton. All of their information and more is out there and can be to support. Well, you guys know what time it is. That's right. Dr. Delisa Hernandez is here in the studio with us, and I'll be calling you. We are continuing our 10-week series. Can you guys believe that Dr. Julissa and I have been on for 10 weeks and we've been giving you great information when it comes to preservation of sex. Now, if you're just tuning in and you're unsure about what we're speaking on, please do. Please go out and purchase her brand new book, which is The Nature Pacific Approach to Fertility. And inside of the book, you're going to get some great information, but this particular topic that we're going to speak on tonight, our conversation is all about Principle 9 and Principle 10, and they are health benefits um, through proper intercourse, and then, of course, sufficient rest after sex. So definitely tune in tonight. Of course, you're going to hear some great information, but as to read in your leisure to get more information about holistic health, definitely pick up a brand new book. Dr. Julissa Hernandez, The Nature Plastic Approach to Fertility. I do believe that Dr. Julissa is here in the studio with me. Dr. Julissa, hello and welcome to Healthy Living. How are you this evening? I'm feeling divine, my dear friend. And how are you? I am wonderful. I am sitting here and realizing that tonight we are going to complete our 10-week series. We have Principle 9 and Principle that we're going to discuss. I'm like, man, time has flown by, but we have got some great information. <laughs> so I am excited, excited to be speaking on that tonight. But, Dr. Stewart, if you will please, you know that we have brand new family members coming in every single week, and if you could just take a moment to introduce yourself, that would be great. I would love to. Thank you so much for having me once again, Kathy. I am Dr. Julissa Hernandez, naturopathic doctor, uh, practicing now for over 22 years. I'm honored to be here on this platform on Source Radio Network. I'm a teacher of natural medicine, an international speaker of natural medicine as well, television and radio personality, and love to talk about hot topics and taboo topics <laughs> here with you my sweet, sweet friend it's just it feels good that we can get blunt and to the point and really touch upon a lot of the questions that your fans and listeners have for us so um, i'm excited about ending our uh i would call it a loving but also naughty series at the same time <laughs> Yes, that is the appropriate name for it. <laughs> I definitely agree with mm -hmm. you. Again, Source Nation, we are speaking with Dr. Julissa Hernandez, and tonight we're finishing up our 10-week series with Principle 9 and Principle 10, and they are health benefits with proper intercourse. That is Principle 9, and then, of course, Principle 10 is sufficient rest after sex. Now, I don't want to keep the Source Nation family waiting, Dr. So mm -hmm. let's jump right on in. Principle <laughs> nine okay. in reference to um, health benefits through proper intercourse. Now, why was it so important for you to place in the book? 
<sighs> to have sex is a healthy habit. Yes, we can live without it, but we cannot live, and this is uh, as per the uh, information and work of, for example, the couples therapist, Esther Perel, we cannot live without intimacy and touch. However, it is a healthy habit to have, for example, sex and to be able to uh, practice that on a basis that is um, on, on, a, on a normal basis, on a, if possible, frequent basis to help maintain certain healthy aspects of your body and uh, physicality. And so, what I did want to share with everyone is that, that for example, uh, the Mayo College of Medicine supports that, for example, in men, erections are vital to penile muscle health. Uh, they bring much needed oxygen. They bring much needed uh, blood flow to the uh, penis area. And then with regards to women, uh, as published in the journal, Fertile Sterile Sexual Arousal, was shown to increase blood flow and vaginal lubrication, which facilitates intercourse for women. And so knowing that you are participating in that sort of a habit, please know, is something that is going to bring more health to the body. Whenever a man becomes erect, the erectile tissues are receiving healthy blood, blood flow and receiving uh, good amounts of oxygen. With a woman, we've already uh, found and research that the G-spot is actually comprised of also erectile tissue. And so then for a woman to be aroused is promoting more blood flow to the loin area, to the genital region, to the G-spot, and also promoting more oxygen. This in general is going to cause a much healthier state of the body if things are flowing as they should circulatory-wise and oxygen-wise uh, to extremities like that. say that anything, any sort of exercise and sex, for many of you that don't consider that, is an exercise. You're actually exercising the penile muscles, the vaginal uh, uh, muscles of, you know, of the vaginal walls. And so anything that is going to exercise muscles of the body is going to promote more better, uh, better blood flow, is going to promote more oxygen flow. And that in general is stimulating to, yes, overall health and most definitely the immune system. I absolutely support that. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. There. Now, not only did they say that it helps keep your immune system um, in tune and, and work properly, it also stated, I found this very interesting too, that it boosts the libido and it improves a woman's Bladder. Now, let me read a little bit about that. Please do, yes. I think um, you can understand. This is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They said, in regards to boosting um, a woman's libido, it helps um, her to make sure that vaginal lubrication is, is there, um, that her blood flow is, is consistent. Not only that, it helps um, prevent uh, incontinence. Mm -hmm. So, there. If she was to have sex a lot, these are some of the things that will help in those areas. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely, absolutely, 100% agree. See, here's the thing. Chinese medicine teaches us that the kidneys are the residence of the loins. 
and the support organ of the kidneys is the bladder. Ergo, if the kidneys are strong, for example, then of course then the reproductive system responds the way it should, having good intercourse, exercising the muscles of the loins and the genital region is most definitely going to have an effect on the root organs, which are the root of the health of the reproductive system. And so the bladder being that secondary organ, if we are exercising and, and causing things to flow, causing blood flow to, to flow in moments of desire and moments of intimacy to the loins, to the uh, genital region, then we're also causing oxygen to also generate uh, more flow to that area then most definitely the bladder, all muscles in that area are going to be responding. They're going to be more nourished. They're going to be receiving more nutrients because there's more blood flow going to that area in general. And so most definitely that can cause that. Now, here's another factor. When a woman is having an orgasm, Kathy, it's almost as if she's having slight contractions in that area. And, you know, the uterus may contract a bit, uh, the clitoral region may even contract a bit. There may be some throbbing in that area. And that's almost like when a woman tends to hold urine and release, hold urine and release, the Kegel per se type of exercise um, that a woman may do to strengthen uh, you know, her, her vaginal muscles and to also strengthen the bladder. That tends to take place when a woman is in the throes of having uh, the luxurious sensations of an orgasm. And so most definitely that is why being more intimate, experiencing more orgasm and so on also uh, will help to strengthen the walls of the vaginal muscles uh, and most definitely will uh, strengthen bladder muscle as well. Love that, love mm -hmm. that. Now, next um, note here, which is, which is great, and I'm glad we're speaking on this because I actually received a letter uh, not too long ago mm -hmm. stating that uh, a husband and wife, they, of course, uh, have sex, but she was concerned with the fact that he has um, high blood pressure, high blood pressure. And so, in this particular article, they actually said, you know, increasing your your um, sex life can prevent um, onset hypertension as well as lower your blood pressure. Talk to the Social Nation family about that because I found that very interesting. Okay, wonderful. Once again, I'm going to go to what, for example, natural medicine teaches us. In naturopathy, we know and we learn and we kind of have to have embedded in our minds what we're taught as far as there's no such thing as high blood pressure, only weak kidneys. The kidneys, once again, are the organs in which the residents of the loins lie. And so if we are having more intercourse, we are producing more blood flow, uh, I'm sorry, more sex, we're producing more blood flow to the genital region, we're producing more oxygen to the genital region, the kidneys are also going to benefit. And then the secondary effect can then be that the blood pressure becomes more regulated as well. When more blood flow is generated throughout the body in general, blood pressure becomes much better. When the kidneys are less stressed, blood pressure becomes much better. And in moments of intimacy, there is much release of stress there. So it's a, a wonderful cycle of where that shows us that everything in the body is interconnected and that one act can stimulate and benefit another and benefit another area of the body and so on. It's a, it's a beautiful thing when one looks at the body the way Chinese medicine teaches us to look at it as an umbrella in which everything is interconnected. like that. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one, um, I, I had to chuckle, but I also agree, and I'll just read what they say to hear in the article. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, sex can't count as exercise. Mm -hmm. Now, sex is a really is a really great form of exercise, and now it won't uh, replace your treadmill or anything like that, mm -hmm. but sex uses about five calories per minute, mm -hmm. or more calories than watching television. <laughs> it gives you punch, like a one-two punch. It actually bumps up your heart rate and it uses serious muscles. So they say just continue to stay busy in the bed. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. 
I love it. I absolutely agree. No, I don't believe it'll replace the elliptical machine or the treadmill or or yoga. Uh, but but yes, or but yes, I I absolutely agree that that is again we we want to move and exercise all the muscles of our body and and it really it really is Kathy. If you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, how many? You know, women have I treated with challenges of, for example, vaginal atrophy, and and if we look at, for example, again, what uh, is stated here that in in the in my book that I stated a lot of uh, statistics and a lot of research and a lot of studies, wherein men are known to have between three to five erections per night, and not including the erections that come about uh, from sexual intimacy. It's been found through the American Journal of Medicine that men who have sexual intercourse less than once a week are twice as likely to develop erectile dysfunction, to develop, develop ED. And so being active sexually is a healthy habit. So yes, let's, let's burn calories too. <laughs> Love it, love it. Now, you know, we, we talked about hypertension and, and uh, your blood pressure, but mm -hmm. they also said having a good sex life is good for your heart. So, you know, always think about that because the fact is that the heart rate helps you uh, keep your estrogen level and the testosterone level. So, what are your uh, thoughts about that? And is that actually true? Is that actually level? Out the balance between the two. Yes, yes. Again, we're talking about good blood flow. We're talking about generating and stimulating chi flow throughout the body, stimulating oxygen, stimulating that, that circulation of blood throughout the body to extremities, head, hands, feet, genital region. And if we're doing that and we're promoting that because things are not stagnant within the body, because we're not uh, con constantly maintaining a state of lethargy, you know, where, where we're not moving, where we're not stimulating things and having things be moved around and, and prodded and so on, then the muscles are going to respond. And again, uh, blood flow and oxygen is what we're looking for here to maintain the, a good, healthy state. So yes, I agree with that. If it's more blood flow, you're going to better your cardiovascular health. Yes, most definitely. Um, with regards okay. to that as well, if I may, with regards to that as well, um, know that that also increases energy within the body in general. If a person tends to suffer from constant fatigue, will maybe be a little bit more active in the bedroom, which will help, again, with stimulating energy throughout the body. So, yeah. Okay. And, and that's, that's good to hear. And I want to ask you this, because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Based on the fact that we know that it lowers the heart attack, uh, heart attack risk uh, is a great form of exercising. We know that uh, they can assist with hypertension and mm -hmm. lowering blood uh, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. What when people say an active sex life, mm -hmm. how many times should we be doing this? Is this like in one night? Is this over four a week? What are you sharing with your, your patient? In order to have a great sex life, how much of it do we really need? <laughs> hmm, that is a wonderful, wonderful question. If, if we look at what, for example, studies show us where a man who has sex less than once a week is twice as likely to develop erectile dysfunction, then one would determine that, okay, we need to do it at least once. When I work with a couple, whether they're coming to me with challenges of fertility or they're coming to me with challenges of sexual dysfunctions, the woman or the man, I have to remind them that it is not only the act. Let me explain. The focus should truly be on the pleasure given and the pleasure received. Now mind you, if in that time of intimacy so much pleasure is given and at the end the actual act of intercourse per se is not had, that doesn't mean that it's not good sex. 
keep in mind that arousal itself will stimulate blood flow, will stimulate oxygen flow throughout the body, and that one can, as we already know, orgasm, as far as a woman, without having per se necessary that, that sexual intercourse, and a man can also obviously reach that heightened point of arousal without the actual act of intercourse. There are many other things within, within uh, foreplay and touch and uh, sensual acts that can be done without necessarily that per se act. Now, we're not obviously talking about fertility at this very moment because we know that that's needed to conceive. But if in general, we're talking about couples where uh, they just feel that it's the act, okay, let's get it done and that's it. It shouldn't just be focused on that. I, I love, and I love the work by, done by, for example, um, psychotherapist Esther Perel, where she is a couples therapist. And truly, um, I've studied a lot of her work so that I can relate this to the relationships with my couples because if relationships are not good, their health suffer. And so I've had to incorporate that very much in my consults. And it's important for, for them to see that it's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, okay, we did it, we're good. And this means, and this is the, the actual definition of our relationship. Oh, we can have sex two or three times a week. But that doesn't actually say that just because the act of it is done, that the actual part of the loving and intimacy and adoration is actually taking place there. It can't just be focused on the act. We cannot live, as she, for example, states, without touch, but we can live without sex. And even just throughout touch, we can stimulate blood flow to extremely flowing height. We can stimulate oxygen flow throughout the body. Our imaginations are wonderful with regards to that. If one can close their eyes with their partner and just be spoken to in loving tones and told of all the things that they would do to them and all they're doing is lightly touching their bodies, the actual response can be greater than the actual act of sexual intercourse itself. And so I, I, um, I beg to differ in, in that where, where, yes, it is, it has stated that there needs to be the actual physical, let's say, act of a man, let's say, having to have intercourse no less than once a week to be twice as likely not to suffer from erectile dysfunction. But I feel that it's wrong for them to have a scoreboard and say, okay, we did it three times this week, and yet there not be that actual connected feeling, that actual intimacy feeling. The, the, the focus should continue to be on, on pleasure feeling pleasure and receiving pleasure and the body will respond to that in a, in a positive healthy manner love that so we are speaking to Dr. Sandra in reference to um, her topic on um, a healthy benefit through my firm and that information can be found and it really puts it into the major package of close to fertility I am so glad I'm going to go back to our discussion here. I'm glad that you mentioned in reference to um, orgasm and the fact that um, having pleasure or being able to please one another prior to mm -hmm. um, having sex is very important because, as we all know, we as women, we love to have a great orgasm. Yes, <laughs> now, 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 don't get me wrong, those things are awesome. <laughs> They're amazing. Awesome. Yes, they are. Yes, <laughs> multiples and all, <laughs> multiples and all. But but what I, but I, I don't. I, it's it's important that a woman doesn't think that she's she's missing out if she, if she's trying to compare, you know, trying to compare herself with the the, uh, the intimacy and and pleasure given in a moment can be greater. Then, then multiple orgasms in another one where it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, here, 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 and you're done. It, it's, it's, it shouldn't be just on the act, the focus. My, but they're great. <laughs> they're great. That's they right. That, that's what they were saying, too. Okay. You know, in order to, to block the pain um, of having sex, and, and this is, you said, this, you know, getting in and doing what you got to do and not, not in, enjoying the experience, mm -hmm. that is something that, that women have stated is that 
because it's so painful, they were unable to have an orgasm. And the fact is, is that this is what they're wanting to to have, so they won't have to concentrate on the pain. Mm-hmm. So I like the fact that you said that, you know, uh, being able to please and, and, and have the pleasurable moments prior to is that much greater. Mm-hmm. Um, and not just for the women, uh, gentlemen. The gentlemen want the same thing. Yeah. So, no, they want the, the arousal experience as well. So I think that that is um, great information that you shared there. Now, um, last on this particular article, they stated, Dr. Delisa, in reference to prostate cancer, um, having a great healthy sex life can lessen the chances mm-hmm. of prostate. And I want to read something to you because mm-hmm. I, I think that this is something that... Um, is significant in mm-hmm. understanding and knowing. Mm-hmm. It says that men who ejaculated frequently, and this is at least 21 times a month, were less likely to get prostate cancer. Mm-hmm. And this actually came from the Journal of the American Medical Association when they said if you're having sex um, consistently, if you um, are having sex consistently, then your chances of prostate cancer is less. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? And is that actually true? I I agree. I absolutely agree. Once again, we're talking about getting to a heightened state because blood flow has been increased, oxygen has been increased, and when that is circulating throughout the body, it is less prevalent for abnormal cells to develop. Normally, those types of challenges take place in areas, let's say, of the body that are very stagnant in nature of receiving nutrients, areas of the body that are stagnant in nature of receiving, um, again, blood flow and so on and so forth. Cells that tend to just uh, go awry and become abnormal because they're not receiving what they should. And when a person is active, when a man is active sexually, then you're stimulating all of that, what we call in Chinese medicine, stimulating that qi flow. And if we want to take it to now more um, uh, conventional medical terms, it's that flow of blood and oxygen throughout to that extremity, to the loin area. And of course, that is going to make prevention of challenges, even of an enlarged prostate can be prevented uh, from being more active in that sense. Not overdoing it, but um, I, I would say that it is important for a man to definitely incorporate that in their lifestyle and in their daily, in their uh, life, to, to, to be able to practice that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily just have to be through intercourse. Ejaculation can be obtained. Heightened pleasure can be obtained in other ways as well. Awesome. Now, as we transition into Principle 9, the last Ten. Um, Ten, you mean? point that they wanted to make in ah. reference to okay. uh, in reference to sex, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they said it improves your sleep. It improves your sleep. And the fact is, they said, you know, after you've had a great orgasm and um, you, you've had the pleasure experience, it helps you rest. So let's talk about that because Principle 10 talks about sufficient rest after sex. What are your thoughts about that, Dr. Julissa? And then, of course, why was that so important to make this Principle 10 in your book? Most definitely. I am sure that everyone here pretty much can agree that sex is a great stress release, a wonderful stress release. It is something that it, it, it is pretty difficult not to be in the present moment when you're there so that you can uh, let go of all thoughts of other challenges and other things to overcome in one's life. When you're in that moment, you want to be in that moment and, and pretty focused on what is happening in that moment so that you can achieve that orgasm. For those ladies out there that have, that you mentioned a moment ago, questions have come in and maybe have had those challenges of not achieving that. These are some of the things that I help my women, my patients, female patients, um, overcome and, and, and in teaching them how they how they can be more present in the moment with their partner, not thinking about, let's say, the kids or this and that and so on. So yes, it is a wonderful stress release to help with sleep and help with insomnia. I've actually recommended that to 
to some of my patients to try to maybe be in the moment of intimacy when Chinese medicine teaches us is circulation sex time. And this I share very much in detail in my book about the best times of day to have sex where it's, it tends to be even more enjoyable. And in that four hour interval, when they're having intimacy, then allowing the body to rest. Um, so uh, what, um, what is noted is that uh, when one is being intimate during that time, and as I, as I state here in principle 10 on page 41, a sufficient rest after sex is necessary that I stated. Uh, it's necessary because it's generally needed for health. We need balanced bodies. We need to do that. And what happens also after sex is that the, the blood flow that runs in and out of the heart is regulated by, by the pericardium of the heart. And this is called emotional energy. This is emotional energy related to it. What we should know is that feelings of love, intimacy, affection, and sex they clearly show the emotional and physical connection with regards to the acts of sex. And so blunt sexual intimate energy uh, of the kidneys and, and the love given off by the heart is moderated by the pericardium. And this overall energy is most active during that specific hour interval when they're having intimacy. Now afterwards, in the evening hours, we should be able to then bring all of that energy down as far as rest. So in the moment that we're in intimacy, uh, having intercourse, having those moments of pleasure, that energy level is heightened. And once that release has had, once that, d that, um, that pleasure is fulfilled, that we feel full, then the body can come down and wind down. And so the moment of being able to feel and have the opportunity to absorb sleep and absorb rest is much easier. So it is necessary for recharging. It's like we're recharging our batteries once again afterwards. Wow. <laughs> Great information, Dr. Julissa. You have shared, of course, again, Force Nation, Dr. Julissa and I have um, come together to do a 10-week series um, <laughs> For the last 10 weeks on the points to the uh, preservation of sex so the um this gives us an understanding of how we can have great sex not only that we talked about um fertility dr julissa if you will I, I would like for you to just sum up what the 10 week um conversation was about uh for new listeners that are coming in, and then with the family that have followed us. Something that's very important, of course, all 10 principles I feel are very important, but what is something that we should focus on coming from the 10? I, I would say that of the 10, of what Chinese medicine teaches us as the prescriptions um, for preservation of life and, and with regards to sex, uh, we talked about proper, t proper timing of orgasm and uh, how important it is to have that closeness. That's what I would say would be the biggest takeaway that I share with everyone between pages 136 and 141 here. This book is not only for those that want to conceive, it's for those women, single women, single men, and couples that want to achieve a closer intimacy and thrive and feel more in the moments of pleasure. And I would say that the biggest takeaway when you read those 10 points in that section is that they must take the time to slow things down and truly enjoy each other as best as possible. I detail there how important it is for us to just take a moment to not even speak, but look into each other's eyes, feel each other's energy through touch, feel each other's energy through your eyes, and then proceed in a slow manner, not rush, taking their time to experience each other to the ultimate points of pleasure, not only focusing on the act and not only focusing on the finale, but truly wanting to bring each other pleasure. And if, and in those moments where you begin a, a, a kind of light foreplay, if sex ends up taking place, then great. But don't feel that because you feel full, just enjoying each other and bringing each other pleasure in other ways, whether it's just through sensual touch, 
and then later on maybe saying loving adoring words to each other if you feel full then that's what's right for both of you and not to feel the pressure of needing to end with a specific act if it does take place wonderful beautiful let that happen but flow with each other and if you can and that moment does take place where you are in the throes of intercourse then try to rise and flow with each other and try to experience if you never have orgasming and coming to that heightened point of pleasure at the same time it can be an extreme moment of ecstasy an extreme moment of bonding of each other's energy that you have probably never felt before and that's what I would say would be the biggest takeaway <laughs> Wow love it well Dr. <laughs> Jaleesa again thank you so much it is been indeed a pleasure having you here in the studio and definitely giving us some great things to uh, discuss over the last 10 weeks. You know, we always like to end either with some encouraging word or maybe some tips and advice that we have not shared in tonight's conversation. If you wish to contribute, we'd love for you to do so at this time. Okay, well, wonderful. I, I just, I, I want everyone to please know that if, if you feel there's someone in your existence, a couple, uh, you know, um, a relationship that you feel needs this information, please share it on and know that no matter what state your relationship is at at the moment, that these things can be brought in if both of you truly desire to take your relationship to another level. Know that uh, we need to remember that yes, we can love, but if we don't truly work on it, desire can wane in a relationship. And they don't always exist at the same time. You can continue loving someone. But like I've had couples in my office tell me we love each other very much, but there's no sex. And we love each other very much, but there's no more intimacy. And that can be a problem. And I do discuss that very much here. It is important for us to know that we should work on that aspect of desire. Bring nuance. Bring new things into the relationship. Uh, unexpected things bring mystery back and uh, that that then will fuel a lot of what many of my couples and patients have felt is missing from the connection that they used to have in the beginning so work on that in, in a loving manner and uh, you can bring it back it's a positive thing to, to, to know and remember that you can bring that back Awesome. Thank you. And if you will, share with Source Nation and everyone uh, listening tonight, how can we get more information about you and continue to support your effort? Thank you so much, Kathy. It's been a pleasure always to be here with all of you, Source Radio family and Facebook family as well. You can find my information at drjulisa.com. That's D-R-J-U-L-I-S-S-A.com. And you can all find both editions of my new book, The Naturopathic Approach to Fertility, in on Amazon at amazon.com slash author slash dr julisa you can just do a search there and uh, also find that on my website it has been a pleasure kathy happy holidays my sweet friend and happy holidays to all of you happy holidays to you as well dr <laughs> julisa again thank you so much for coming in and giving us great information i know that next year we're going to have more great conversations as well thank you again thank you bye now Bye.